wine sag. This is just like, it just happens all the time and we can't get rid of it. We can't deny it. We have to deal with it, right? It's, um, it happens a lot because people don't want to be over early. And when you're in the middle of the line, you feel exposed. You can't see the eyes of the PRO on the, on the starting line. You can't see the pin boats anchor, you know? Um, and so you're a little like in this, what you feel like no man's land, you're exposed and you don't, you know, it, it's easy to make an error. You think that you're causing, you know, you're going to, you're being risky and you're going to pull the trigger early and be called over early because they must see you and you're sticking out. Um, this is why we think it happens. <laughs> when you line up next to a boat and um, you guys are both hanging out somewhere between like head to wind and close hauled, I think this little like um, optical illusion occurs where you think your bow is bow, you know, in line with them, but you're actually a little bit bow back. And then you have that happen 10 times over and one boat's a little further bow back and a little bow back and a little bow back. And then all of a sudden you're two boat lengths back and that's the line tag. Um, so look at these four boats on the bottom and the ones on the left, uh, I just want to point out. So that would be like if they were both head to wind with their sails laughing and they were on the starting line and they'd be bow even, right? And then now when you pivot those boats 45 degrees down, I want to point out where the bow of the windward boat is on the leeward boat. It's like almost back by where the skipper sits, right? But that's not generally where people sit when they're setting up because they think they're, that you feel exposed there. Usually I'm the crew. Usually I'm like probably where the bow of the neck, the windward boat is. And so if you look at the diagram on top that with the sagging boats, <laughs> um, the bow of the boat directly to windward of most of these boats is about where the, where the crew would sit. And so that doesn't line you up um, in a line that's parallel to the starting line. That lines, that, that basically creates a sag. So um, I want to actually go back a couple pictures. Yeah, so this one, those boats are all basically in line with the starting line. But you'll see that like when they turn down, it's almost one in front of the other. Um, and so I bet Sweden and France feel pretty exposed, but they're not actually in front of each other, of, you know, stacked up wind. They're like still next to each other. Um, so I just want to point out that this is a really common trend and, and knowing um, you can have your coach kind of help you out. Like, but knowing when you're next to a boat, how far forward do you need to be on that boat in order to actually be bow to bow on, on an imaginary line versus bow to bow on a line that's, diverging from the starting line. There's a huge opportunity here to jump the fleet and be bold and pull the trigger and know your time and distance and take advantage of that line sag. But you have to get really comfortable with um, knowing what is bow to bow, uh, what does that position look like and feel like relative to the line? And then what does it look like when you're sailing up wind? And is it, you know, you probably have to be a little further bow forward on the boat to windward to truly be at that 90 degrees uh, bow to bow line. Um, okay, so we have a couple tricks for, or Steph, you want to talk about your tricks for when you're in the line tag? Yeah, I think, you know, one thing that would, that makes me really nervous if we're in the middle of the line, um, is if I can't see either end of the line. Um, that's, that's a big cue of like, I'm, I can't see either end. We need to, we need to start getting forward so we can at least take a peek of what's going on around us. Um, another trick, which is really handy for crews, and sorry to any single-handed sailors out there, um, is to, to put the boat head to wind, and then just like in the pre-start when you check the line bias, the crew can put their arms out um, and get a feel for where both ends of the line are. Um, so, you know, if you have a really forward angle with your arms, you're obviously really far back, but as, as your arms get wider and wider, um, you're getting closer and closer to the line.